Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Legends of Zelda livestream. In today's video we are going to be continuing on with our Zelda game and taking a look at how we can set up a basic AI enemy that we are going to be able to hit with our sword and when we hit that AI enough times with our sword it's going to take damage and if the health on that AI gets down below zero it is going to kill him, the AI is going to disappear and we are going to do all of that good stuff. So there's plenty that we're going to be doing in today's video. We've got to set up the collision based uh, weapon system so when that sword actually physically hits the AI that is when it's going to do the hit and we've also got a health system to set up for that AI as well. Now also in addition to that we're also going to be fixing up a couple of bugs with our Legends of Zelda game. So at the moment when you left click you can see it's trying to play that animation twice or about one and a half times. We're going to be showing you how to fix that and then moving on from there. So the first thing that we're going to do then is fix up that animation and before they do that I'd also like to make a massive thank you to the Patreon supporters that have made this live stream possible in addition to everyone that's been following along. So for the sword the issue is I've been looking into this if we open up our link underscore sword swing you'll notice in the top left hand corner in the asset details you'll notice that the rate scale for playing is set to 1.5 so it's actually playing longer than you need it to so the normal rate is one and a half seconds. Now because the rate scale is at one and a half it's playing one and a half times as quick so it's actually playing at one second instead of one and a half. And inside of our third person character for this blueprint that we've made the delay is one second rather than 1.5 so trying to loop that animation so what you want to do is just set this to one or if you want it to play at the normal speed you go in to that animation set it to one like it should normally be and set this to the duration of the animation which is one and a half if we compile this now press play and dive in it's only going to swing that sword the once which is exactly what i wanted it to do so, moving on from here, let's go ahead and show you how you can set up the collision based system for the weapon and then we will create the AI that we can use to work with this. Now what you need to do is open up your sword for your character, so go to your Zelda folder, go to blueprints and open up link underscore sword. In the viewport what we need to do is add a collision for this. So what I'm going to do is add a component in the top left hand corner and then I'm just going to scroll down until I find a box collision. Now this box collision I am just going to move this up and make it cover the blade of the weapon. So what you should have is something that is shaped a bit like this. Make sure it's not too wide, make sure it's nice and close to the blade of the weapon. Now what I'm not going to do is have it cover the whole handle, I just don't need that. And you should have something which looks like this. Just use your normal transformation tools on this to get it to make the shape that you need to do. So now that we've done this, we can start working on the code for that later on, but for now we actually need an AI within our scene that we are going to be able to damage. And the way I'm going to do this is within my Zelda folder in the blueprints, I am going to create a new blueprint class for a character. And this is just going to be called Simple AI, and then I'm going to open this up. Now within the mesh, I'm just going to set this to the default Unreal Engine 4 skeleton. So what I'm going to do is go down to Skeletal Mesh on the drop down. I am just going to look for one of the characters in here, the mannequin I think it's called. So if I type in M-A-N I should be able to find it. So SK underscore mannequin. And then what I'm going to do with this is simply just place it down and scale it so that it fits within my capsule just like this. And what I also need to do with the simple AI is just rotate it and make sure it is facing the forwards arrow that we've got here which simply tells us which way this AI should be facing. 
So I'm just going to make sure this is uh, 90 degrees and that's good. And then for the animation class, we're just going to use third person underscore animbp. What we should have now, if we compile this and drag it into our scene, is a default character looking dude just standing there playing the idle animation. So what we've got to do now then is figure out a way to make it so that when you swing your sword, it is going to take damage from that. And the way we're going to do this is by opening up that simple AI again. I'm going to go into my viewport and first thing first, I'm going to make him a little bit taller actually. So I'm just going to scale all of this up just like that. And same goes for the capsule component. You want to make that bigger as well. So I'm going to set this to like 1.2, 1.2, and 1.2. And just scale my dude down so he fits within this like that. So what I need to do now then is with this blueprint, I need to add a variable for the health. So just go to the variables bit in the bottom left here. Add a variable for health. And then just set the variable type to a float hit compile, and then the default value should be one. So one is gonna be 100% health, and zero is going to be no health at all. So what we need to do is add a little bit of code within this AI that is going to register a hit whenever it collides with that weapon. So I'm gonna to go to my event graph, and then with this, event actor begin overlap, and the other actor is going to be cast to link underscore sword. We are going to tell this to set the health down a little bit. So set health to float minus float. And the original value at the top here should be your starting point, so the health you've got at the moment. And then the value here just below this, this is the amount of health that you want to take away. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take away 0 0.4, um, actually let's take away 0 0.35, so 35% of that AI's health each time that we hit it. And what I'm also going to do is run a print string and set that string to hit, just so that we know that this AI is actually being hit by the sword. So if I press play, and you can see as I swing it, it is printing that string. Now what you will notice is that it is actually hitting it more than one time with each swing, which is not great. So what we need to do with this, with this sword, is when you get hit, we need to tell it to change a variable to cannot be hit for a duration of time, which is going to be equal to the next, you know, swing, basically. So what we're going to do is basically before we set the health down and register it as a hit, we are going to run a check, a check to see whether or not the player or the AI rather has just been hit. So I'm going to add a variable with the name just been hit and I'm going to set this to a boolean now this might not make sense to you straight away but once we've got the system in place and I break it down a little bit more it'll be a bit easier to understand but if you just follow along with this for now you will get that so just been hit if just been hit is false break the link from true we want it to do that and then what we're going to do with this is we are going to set just been hit to true and then we're going to run a delay of about half a second um, to make sure they don't get hit twice and then we are going to set just been hit to untrue if it's true and they have just been hit we're just going to tell it to do nothing so let's test this now press play and then hit them with the sword it's still hitting them twice, but not sort of four times like it was before. So for this, I'm going to set my delay duration to one, press play, and let's give it a go now. And it's still just doing it with the one now, which is perfect. It's doing it exactly how I wanted it to do. So swing, if the sword actually hits him, it's going to hit him once, 
and that is good. That is perfect. That is exactly how I wanted it to be. Just to be safe, I'm going to set this to 1.2 as well. Now, with this collision based system, there is a bit of an issue. And that issue being is if I just walk into him with my sword, it's also going to register as a hit. So what I've got to do is, as part of this, check to see whether or not they've just been hit. I've got to check to see whether or not the player is actually swinging their sword. If they're not swinging their sword, we don't want it to do damage and we don't want it to register as a hit. So what I'm going to do is make some space just over here. And before that, we are going to cast to the third person character. Now the reason why we're casting to the third person character is because we are trying to see whether or not the swinging sword variable is true. So the object wild card should be get player character and then as third person character get swinging sword. So what we're going to do is move all of this stuff along just to the right just like that. And then with this, we are going to run one more check before this to see if swinging sword is true. If it is true, it's going to do this. If it's false, it's not going to do nothing. So it's not going to register a hit against this character. So if I run up to it now and just try and walk into it with my sword, you will notice almost straight away it is not going to hit it. However, if I look at him, left click, swing my sword that way, it's registering the hit and it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. Now if we open up this blueprint again, what I'm going to get it to do is to change the print string from hit to the remaining health. So I can see that that is also going down. So I'm going to compile this, press play. If I hit him once, it's gone down to 0.65. 0.2 and now it's gone to a minus value and at that point he should be dead so what we need to do now is pretty much just generate some code which is basically going to kill that AI so what I'm gonna do is I am going to run a check just after this print string, uh, just before this print string here from the return value for this to check to see whether or not the health of the actor or the AI is below zero. So I'm going to grab out my condition and get float less than or equal to and work with this. Now I'm going to break that print string, set this to one, uh, set this to zero. So it's checking to see whether or not the AI has got less than zero health. And then what I'm going to do is move this along. We don't need this just yet. I'm going to break this link. And if it's true and the health is less than zero, we are going to tell it to destroy the actor. If it's false, just don't destroy it. Just let it keep doing its thing. And either way, this has got to go into the code for just being hit. So from the end of here, this is going to go into there. And false, this is going to go into there. So what we should find is after three hits, this should disappear. So one hit, oh, missed him, one hit, and he's gone. So that's pretty cool. So let's have a look at this again. So press play, hit, hit, and hit, and he's gone on the third one, and that's great. Now, you guys, if you wanted to, you could add particle effects for this. So after you destroy the actor, you could spawn an emitter, um, you could play a sound, that kind of stuff is completely up to you. You could even have a sound effect for just damaging the AI. It is entirely up to you. That is something that you have complete control of. Um, for now, what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and use a simple little particle system um, like explosion. Explosion, so let's just use p underscore explosion so we can see this die and then compile this and try it again and make sure that's running. So one, two, and three. Uh, sorry, one more hit and he's gone. And he didn't play the particle system because I didn't put a location in there. So what I gotta do for this is just type in get actor location 
and just hook this up into here and that's going to get the location of what you've just done so compile this so the location of the character you are hitting one two and on the last hit he should disappear destroy itself and go he's gone into thin air so hopefully you guys are enjoying this and you can see that our ai system is really starting to come to life and i hope you enjoy the rest of the videos in this live stream that are to come and don't forget this is just an edited video or an edited version of the live live stream as well once again guys thanks for watching stay awesome keep curating your boy vertus signing out This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.